This series of films is going to be about the total rebuild of this Kawasaki KLR650 engine. Now this came out of a 1989 Tengai and it came out because the water pump impeller has sheared off the end of the shaft and the bottom end is really noisy. Now I did the doohickey conversion, the Eagle Mike doohickey conversion on this um, thinking that that perhaps was the noise problem. It certainly has helped but the bottom end sounds poor. Um, I think it may have been run without oil at some point in its life. Um, well, we'll dismantle it and find out. Um, it is going to be a complete strip down and rebuild. Um, while we're at it, all the components in the bottom end will be replaced. We'll do the clutch. We'll think probably about putting a high compression piston in here and boring it out slightly. I think it brings it to about 680 cc's. So we'll see how we get on with that. Anyway, watch this series of films and uh, let's see how we get on. Okay, so the two short ones are in the top. Okay, so I think what we'll do now is we will find top dead center and check the shins and the clearances on this. Okay, so we're now going to find top dead center. Now you can feel it with the compression on the engine. If it's in the non-compression cycle, it's an exhaust, uh, although you'll see the mark on the uh, crank, um, it isn't top dead center. So feel the compression come up and you'll see a little T appear, which you can probably just see there in the hole there. So if I move this about a bit, See it come round. There we go. So that's non-compression. Come round. You can feel the compression come on slowly. There we go. You can hear it as well coming out. There we go. You can see the T there. Right. Man that up slightly like that. Okay, so you know you've got top dead centre when the cam lobes are pointing out from the centre of the cylinder head. Um, and this is the on the compression cycle. On the non-compression cycle, they would be pointing inwards, but that is not top dead centre. That's 180 degrees out. So once more, feel the compression. The cam lobes point outwards. Okay, so that is top dead centre. So now we can uh, see what the valve clearances are like. Okay, so we are looking at the valve clearances on the inlet side, that's nearest the carburetor of, that's about 0.15 of a millimeter. You can see that there. And actually that's slightly looser, that's probably about 0.18 of a mil, but it's certainly not uh, 0.2. Yeah, that, that's 0.2 there. That 
that's slightly tighter, 0 0.2. I reckon that's probably going to be. Yeah, that's about 0.18. So they're within spec. They are not exactly the same, but they are within spec. Right, it's important to get these uh, off and on in the right order. So uh, this bit here is the front of the engine. Um, and these are actually marked, these caps. Um, that's inlet, inlet right, exhaust. There's a little R there, exhaust right. That one's not marked, but it's clearly the left. It's important that they go on in exactly the same way that they came off in terms of order. Next little job is to take the tension off the cam chain here and that is the cam chain tensioner. So what you do is you loosen that off first then you take these bolts out and remove it then there's no going back after that this all needs to be put back and reset for this to uh, come back up to tension. Um, the best thing to do now I think in terms of access is to Let's have a look at getting rid of that starter motor. Let's do that. Dewalt impact driver, what a piece of kit. Love it. Well, it's now just a question of prising the starter motor out. Let's see if we can do that, there we go. Gently just pull it like that and bingo, there we go gently drifts out like that. It's just probably worth uh, screwing these back in. I don't think we'll be going out. I don't want to lose these. I'll either bag them or um, note them or screw them back in from when they came. So we now need to loosen the eight camshaft cap bolts. So uh, what we don't want to do is fully pull out that bolt and then fully pull out that bolt. Um, so what we need to do is in decrease the tension, the tension equally across the cap as it comes off. And we'll do the uh, right hand side first. So let's do a bit of a and that and that and uh. I need your assistance. Okay, so okay, so let's now do these ones. Sounds a bit, a bit feels a bit tight that one. OK, 
Okay, so do, that feels a bit tight. Why does that feel a bit tight? <sighs> Threads for a little bit of gunk, I think. Okay, so that then, I suppose we can gently prise that off. Come on, there we go. No wing right neck actually, yeah that's good. In there, and... Okay, so let's have a look at that. As you can see, there's been a bit of uh, water ingress into the oil, hence the uh, hence the white sort of creamy deposit. But uh, and that was a function of the uh, watering powder breaking off a shaft. Um, but no, that looks all looks in good nick actually. It all looks in good nick, and that would go back like that the way it was going to do that. So that's the bottom one, and yeah, that all looks fine. I have to say, that all looks absolutely fine. Do not lose these. These essentially hold the caps centrally over the camshaft. The one that's missing here is actually already in the cap, but we've got all the others, so that will just simply slide back together. Just so I'm exactly certain uh, which bolt goes in which hole in each cap, I just rubber banded these around. Right, okay, next little thing is to get the camshafts off the cylinder head. Do that. Let's see how we go with that. It's one. And that is two. Um, right. So you don't want to get these muddled up. I mean, I suppose it technically it is possible to fit that one in that space, but that is the decompressor um, on the uh, exhaust side which means um, that it has to go here okay so just remember that okay so I've just marked the shims up so um, I know which shims come off what valve and when I go back I can go back just so Okay, so next little job is to get the um, oil cylinder head feed pipe off the head itself. Just to, all you've got to do is unscrew it and disconnect it, and the head will then slide offwards in the vertical direction. That's a 14 mil. So let's uh, have a look at that. There we go. Oh, some copper, copper washers there. You can probably see that the bolt is hollow. That allows the oil flow through the bolt. Okay, so we need to move, remove the three acorn bolts from the uh, cylinder head. Now, there's one at the back. And there's two at the front. Thank you. 
one turn. Yeah, that's it. That's great. Right, there's one around the other side. That looks slightly less. Um, easy to get at, so let's go a bit of space. See any tools in here? Let's have a look. So that's would be the right one, as you can see, probably. Can you see that? You can now. So let's try a. Just the back, front left, front right. Okay, so we've now got to turn to the four cylinder head retaining bolts. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. So these are torqued up really tight. So what we need is a six point socket to do it. Not looking out for for a 14 six point. As this bike is pre 96, it does not have an upper cam chain guide, but the bolts that would otherwise retain it are still here on the pre 96 version. So hit this one and this one, and they go all the way down into the barrel. So these need to be removed before you take the four big retaining bolts out. So let's go ahead and do that. So although eventually what's going to happen is I'm going to take the head and the barrel off, what I don't really want to do is drop any of these nuts, particularly these two, into the, uh, uh, the sump, uh, only because it might just cause a problem a little bit later on. Um, but if you're just doing the operation where you're taking off the head and the, or, or possibly even just the bow, then it's an absolute definitely must do is block uh, the drop into the sump. So I think that's probably, what, eight? What do we think? I think that's probably eight, don't we? Yeah, it's eight. Okay, so... Shorty on there. Needs to be quite long to come out. Okay. Yeah. They go straight down into the barrel. So we're now going to move, remove the four cylinder head retaining bolts um, and you, these need to be removed after you've removed the uh, chain guide bolts and the uh, acorn bolts on the bottom end of the cylinder head. Otherwise what, what it does is once you release the considerable tension on these it just overstresses uh, the remaining bolts if you do it in the wrong order. So Little ones out first, big ones out last, and uh, we're going to do it in a cross pattern as to try and not warp the head. Let's see how much these have done up by. I'm not about to shift that at all, am I? <sighs> not at all.
Long ones. Right, so that is now free. One final thing to do before we actually take the head off is just remove the rear cam chain guide. It's just a let's put that in there. So that's just to make sure I don't drop the damn thing. There we go. And that now should just I think, yeah, pop out. Okay, so that's the top section. Right, so this is now officially ready to come off. So let's go and find my rubber mallet. So got to lightly tap with rubber mallet all the way around the bottom of the head, very gently to lift it off. See how that goes. Yes. Some movement there. Definitely some movement there, that's good. I thought that would be about a 10 month battle, but I think that's going to start off quite nicely. Is that going to. Uh... Oh, yes, it does. Look at that, eh? Come on. Let's give it a bit more. the head okay so retainer there retainer there that's acceptable okay right, so put that down like that problem is I've got that over so what the hell is that Fallen out from somewhere, let's find out where. 